Good morning. I'd like to call the Community Services Committee meeting to order. And uh, Councilor Bill John Baker, would you give the invitation for us, please? Father God, thank you for this uh, life giving rain that uh, we so desperately need. And uh, if you'd guide and breath each of us that uh, we might do your work with Cherokee people and look over the soldiers overseas and their families here at home and uh, forgive us of our many sins and guide and breath us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank to my report today. I think we're still recovering from uh, uh, all the activities of the last month. We did break ground in NOWATA for our new uh, senior nutrition and food distribution building, which we're really excited about. Uh, so that's something we'll be working on. We have several buildings I think you all are aware of. We're hoping to get started on our still, still well uh, uh, child development center probably in the spring this building and we are uh, working on the, the veterans building fundraising for that building so uh, I'm going to get me a hard hat pretty soon I think. Okay. Aside from that you, you have had my report and uh, if you have any questions. We have one from Councilor Watts. Thank you Mr. Chair. <clears throat> Can I get the analysis done on the population base that that no water food distribution serves and the total cost for that facility? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, that's ICDBG money. So uh, we did do a match through the tribe, but most of that match was uh, done with the land donation and the infrastructure. Um, and I can get that for you. So you want the total cost and the population? Yeah, the population base and <coughs> some details around that, not just a number, but... How many we expect to serve? How many serve in that? What the geographical? Okay, we'll be we'll be taking in. Uh, I, I know that we're going to be closing two tailgate sites, maybe three. It'll allow us to do that, and uh, so the Dewey uh, tailgate will go away, and the one in No Water will go away, and I think there's one at White Oak that, that will go away because that will serve those people. So that's a good thing. Because a lot of those people now drive further to go to a food store because it's so much nicer to shop at than the, okay. what we do at the... And that's our goal is to eliminate our uh, tailgates and put everyone within about 30 miles of a food store. But I can get you that information. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. okay. Councilor Garvin, you've got a question. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Norma, on the Lahey blankets, uh, we've always... Had a chance to buy some of them. Uh, is that going to develop this year? Or what's we we sure there? hope so. Uh, uh, I can't tell you exactly when, but we certainly will allow you all to, uh, you know, put in your order. Maybe before the first snow. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, 
I, I don't know. Okay. Uh, Thank you, Mr. It, it's changed in the last couple of years, so it's not on the same cycle that it was. Okay. Any more questions for Norman? Thank you. Thank you. Norman. Next is Community Services with Charlie Soap. I see Charlie's with us today. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning, Charlie. Is that my report? Any questions? You got Charlie's report. Um, Mr. Baker. Yes. Charlie, I had a couple of people come to me yesterday and they said that they're uh, in the process of building their self help houses. And uh, they're in different stages. And they said that the workers were pulled off of their homes, said that they wouldn't be back until they built 25 homes someplace else. Do you know what they're talking about? Who would that be? Uh, well, I don't want to get them in trouble. I mean, I can tell you, but, you know, but it's Charlie Barr's one that told them. And in private, I might tell you. But uh, uh, but they, that's what they've been told, is that we're off their project. <coughs> got 25 homes are built someplace else. That they pulled off their supervisors or leads or whatever. What was, what, can you just tell me the county that they're... Cherokee or Muscogee. I don't know where the house is exactly. Okay. I can tip them to it. Get back with you to see it. I can get back with you to see it. I can okay. check on it. But I am. That's not. It shouldn't be that way. I agree. Hopefully it ain't. Thank you. And, and Charlie, I just want to follow that up too. And I have some concerns about that too. I think we're just... Uh, I know we all want to build houses as fast as we can for everybody, but I think the self-help program is probably one of the best programs that we've got going right now. So I hate to see that suffer to go build houses for the, uh, for the other program. But I would say the way we can uh, well, keep everything going. Well. And I'm sure that, that you probably are trying to keep everything going, but if you would check on checking that. Uh, okay. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Watts, you had a question. Thank you. In your report, you had the projected uh, self or the rehab uh, emergency housing assistance. And for Rogers County, you had 49, but you've only had eight year to date. Um, and I can't help but notice that a lot of work has been done in Cherokee, Adair, and Sequoia County and not up north, and particularly in my community and some others. So I was wanting to know why, because I know I get calls that people have applications in. So what's stopping us from that working? And you're talking about the, uh, the rehab part of it? And yeah, like the, uh, uh, it is page. Uh, we don't have a lot of applications from it that way from our standpoint with the uh, self-help or even the uh, emergencies. Uh, it's page three of your report. Uh, rehab emergency, handicap accessibility, and LBC. <coughs> oh, committee report. Yeah, here I am off on a group leaders at David. Pick on okay. Thank yeah, you, Charlie. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, get ready, David. <laughs> Thank you, Charlie. Thank you. you bet. Councilor Thornton has a question. Uh, Charlie, from what I understand on the emergency rehab, <coughs> these people, uh, we have a lot of applications in, but the Elderly and the handicapped come first, and I think you got a lot of applications in on them, and that's what I've been told the last time that I've checked on it. Uh -huh. So, the way I understand it, you better be a elderly or handicapped, or you're not going to. It's going to be hard to get to you. That's what I understand. Okay. Okay. Any more questions, Charlie? Okay. That's not Charlie. Thank okay. you. Roads and transportation with Michael. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, uh, go, morning. Michael, go ahead and do a little bit of your overall. Maybe you'll answer Captain Watson's question. <laughs> She'll be first up. Uh, Mr. Chair, I believe you do have our report, uh, and uh, I'd be glad to answer any questions about it. There's just a few things I would like to point out. Um, before we get into any questions, if there are any. Uh, first of all, we're in uh, Adair County on a uh, project we call Greasy Road. Greasy uh, is a rehabilitation project. 
We do realize and know that there are some failures in that road since it's been constructed. Uh, we're in, in the process of investigating those and trying to figure out what's going on. Uh, we're, we do believe it has to do with that the school reconstruction, but that's uh, we're, we're trying to determine that. And we do uh, we all we will be going back and correcting those issues. <coughs> we're in discussion with the contractor. I just wanted to mention that in case anybody would receive any calls uh, that. Uh, that we're building a road that's substandard, and uh, uh, like I, I want to just mention that we do recognize that there's a problem out there, and we'll be talking or addressing that. Uh, another project we've got going in South Adair County and North Sequoia County is our uh, Nycut. We call them Nycut roads. We call them Nycut North, Nycut South. One of them in Adair County goes up over at Kirk Mountain. The uh, South Road goes into the community of Nycut. Uh, was hit by a major storm event last week. Uh, created some some major problems outside of the scope of the uh, initial project. We're having to go back and uh, take a look at the damage that has occurred and change, kind of modify the scope of the project to address those issues. <coughs> uh, lastly, we've got two community meetings coming up, uh, one on a project in Adair County that uh, was just recently bid out and an award has been made on the Honey Hill project. That uh, community meeting is going to be held at the uh, Honey Hill Free Holiness Church on October 6th at 6.30. Uh, that is a Wednesday night. That church does hold uh, services on Thursday night, so it, uh, it will be available for us on Wednesday night. Uh, we typically try to hold our meetings on Tuesday or Thursday, but they do uh, hold their church services on Thursday. Uh, lastly, on the Pumpkin Hollow Project, uh, located in Cherokee, in both Cherokee and Adair County, uh, we've got a community meeting set up for that on uh, September 28th at the Briggs School Cafeteria at 6.30. Uh, that meeting is just going to be a uh, preliminary meeting to let uh, the community know where we, are, where, where we are at in the process and that we've got a horizontal and vertical alignments established. Uh, don't really have a right-of-way established. We're not going to be there to discuss right-of-way issues at that, mo at that meeting, but just to kind of give them an update on where we're at in the design process. Uh, Council Ross. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Were we able, I think the other two of the three county commissioners in Rogers County had satisfied and had completed projects and there were, we verified there was growth signs up. Mm -hmm. But we're still waiting on Commissioner Helm to finish you with all, correct? Correct. And so he, then you go inspect that and make sure everything's done for what our agreement is? Correct. Yes, ma'am. Okay. How are we on uh, the highway working with uh, ODOT on signage for Claremore Indian Hospital? I understand that that may be moving actually forward and there's some ETA of either this month or next? I, Dana Espinal with Construction Management has, has been taking that over. She's okay. been working directly with ODOT. I've been a little bit involved in the, in the email <coughs> correspondence back and forth, but I can't really answer as far as how far along uh, they are in the process. I do know they would. Last time I saw, they were working on a sign uh, design and what it what it could potentially say. That's really about all I know. I don't okay. know when they expect delivery or installation. Because I haven't yet seen. I don't. Did you have input on making sure that there was at least some kind of minimal signage to get in on major highways? Yes. Towards? Okay. Yeah. Yes. Very good. Yes. Thank you for that. <coughs> mm -hmm. Much appreciate. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Councilor So. I've got two questions, Michael, that involves the Kenwood Road project. I noticed there was some uh, notes and reports said that there was a <coughs> inspection. And then uh, did the guardrails uh, come up during that inspection, or did you previously know about those? Does that have anything to do with that road? Uh, I'm not sure. Guardrail sh problems or something. <coughs> uh, the core. But otherwise, did the road come out? Was it the guardrail guardrail problems in our re our most recent report right. that has been rem remedied? Yes, okay. that was those. Uh, there was a delay in the in the guardrail <coughs> company coming out and, and installing the uh, impact continuators at the end of the guardrail. Uh, that's been remedied and they they are installed. Right. Yes. So the road is good to go. Good to go. We we met uh, out there just uh, late last week, I believe, and did a performed a final inspection on with the contractor. The commissioners were there. Uh, everyone was satisfied, and there were no deficiencies yeah. noted. Well, great. The other thing is that bridge, I still haven't, the family, I don't believe, has been contacted by the, the engineers when they talk about, you know, uh, replacing that bridge, and mm -hmm. then there's going to be some issues about, I think that the question was uh, land ownership and, and who um, the right-of-way uh, gets <coughs> on one side of the, uh, 
road, then who, who owns the bridge that's left and all right. that kind of stuff. So. I did pass that information along to the engineer. <coughs> I will follow up with him and make certain that they call, okay. call him. Uh, Do you, he know, does you have, have a there. contact number there so that, that we can follow up? Sure, okay. sure. Can I get that to you? Yeah, I appreciate that. You Thank bet. you. Councilman <coughs> Thorne. Uh, I'm just kind of going to make a, a little statement here. And, and Ms. Watts just made the statement about the uh, renovating homes and where most of it's happening. And down around Sequoia County and Muskogee County, there's not a lot of happening down there as far as power roads and all of it's going to Cherokee and, and Adair and Delaware County. And I'm sure they're happy about that. I, I don't know why they're not. But uh, it looks like to me they could scatter it around a little better down in our area and go up around the Cherokee Nation. Thank you, sir. Okay. Michael, would you like to come in and, and talk just a little bit about the rating schedule and why, why those things happen? I can, yes. Uh, we do have a rating, rating uh, uh, process that we go through um, for our entire inventory of roads. I believe we've addressed this body before in the past. Uh, regarding that rating criteria and how it, how it operates and how it works. Uh, we do have projects, IRR projects, as well as uh, some housing uh, projects going on that I know I'm, I'm personally involved with in Sequoia County. Uh, there, we've got a, uh, a bridge project that we're working on with, uh, uh, we've contributed uh, over half a million dollars to in Sequoia County near Marble City Schools. Uh, there's, there's a tremendous amount of work being done down in that area. Uh, the, the road project I'm referring to is Moonshine Road. The housing project I'm referring to is uh, Redbird Smith. So there's there's work going on in Sequoia County. Yes, you have to follow. Well, uh, you know those projects are fine, but they wouldn't have come about without the stimulus money, most of it. And another thing is that uh, I'm kind of like another counselor or two on here when something happens in my county, I'd like to be notified. Sure. And I had no idea, you know, how much money you spend and where you spend it and where it's coming from. But our roads, you know, are set up to, for the nation. They're not set up for one district. And when you finish that one district roads, you backtop them, and then several years later, you come back and you overlay them again. Well, I think some of that overlay could go somewhere else. And I think that's been done. Thank you, sir. It, it has been done, uh, Mr. Chair, if I may. It has been done, and there's, it's, it's to keep, it's to preserve an investment that's already been made. Yeah, we like roads preserved, too. I understand. I yeah. understand. But it's to preserve an initial investment that either the BIA made or the Cherokee Nation had made previously. And another road that I failed to mention is the Nine Cut South Road that, is, that goes into Sequoia County under construction, <laughs> under construction as I speak. Uh, there's, there's, there's work going on down there in Sequoia County. Uh, How about Muskogee? Sorry. Excuse me? Muskogee County. Muskogee County. We've got work in Muskogee County. Not under construction well, that right now. Be in my district. I'd like to know about it. Well, I would be glad to give you any, any information you, were, you asked for. Yeah. Just send if you could send me an email or go, go to the proper channels. I'd be glad to get you the information. But if they don't want roads in your district, they don't just send anything. Yes. Michael, if you could for our next committee meeting, just uh, if you would make us a list of all your projects, your one one projects, and some that's in the projection to be done, it'd be beneficial to all council members. Sure. I will do that. Okay, thank you. Uh, um, Councilor Cobb, you had a question. Um, that bridge, two sections west of Ramona. Mm -hmm. Get some signage on that. I think it's clear. Yes, I think uh, Commissioner. Uh, yes, I know who you're talking about. Dunlap. Dunlap, yes, sir. Yeah. Um, we've had some issues with the road out there. Is that have there been some just, uh, northeast Bartlesville? Is there uh, had some trucks? Have we had some conversations on that? Is that no, I talked talk to the commissioner about that in the past. Uh, I believe I spoke to yes, I spoke to you about it. Also, the uh, I actually drove down there last weekend, and there are some failures in it uh, on down the road. And I thought the intersection was going to be a little worse than it was, but there are some failures down there. Uh, Linda has not come back to me with a the commissioner, I should say, has not come back to me with a uh, 
and the cost estimate or anything, what it would take to fix it. But I know she's discussed it. I don't know what her plans are to fix it either. Let me know. I'd like to come Excuse me. Can you pick up a little bit? The council Baker's having problems here, and so am I. Okay. I, I just, if, if you could, just kind of let me know how that's going. Okay. And also let Council Anglin know. I know we had pretty big investment in that. Mm -hmm. um, the third thing is, thank you, is uh, have you been contacted on that gravel uh, request when you came up to Bartlesville? <coughs> Last month, have you been contacted on that gravel request? No, sir. Okay. I have not. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Councilor Fred. I appreciate all the work you've done with some of those can cankerous Mays County residents up there on the Cedar Crest Road. I know the water line's been relocated. Up. Um, what's the status on the, What's the next step? The next, we're working with the, util, I mean the uh, telephone company to get it relocated. Once it's out of the way, that job is ready for construction. Uh, all, we're with, uh, Fairpoint Communication is the utility uh, telephone company that we're working with. Mm -hmm. And as soon as it's out of the way and we've been, been relocated, we will proceed with construction. The bridge, the bridge is most likely to start first, <coughs> and then the road project will follow. Okay, good. Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, Councilor Craig. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Michael, I'm glad to see the Honey Hill Road uh, getting started, and uh, I certainly want to thank you for all your help and patience there. Uh, glad that I'm in a county where the uh, rating process for IRR money is high in a lot of cases, and uh, I'm glad that Sequoia County is close enough to us that it can overflow into Sequoia County on the south end down there and get Davidson Road. Barely. So. <laughs> So thanks for all your work. That's just a comment. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Councilor Jordan, you had a comment or question? Michael, you had sent uh, myself and Mr. Baker an email about yes. Boone Street yes. that goes into Hastings Hospital. And I'm assuming we're still on line that we both want to do that with okay. the remaining, uh, I believe it's the remaining access money that we have in our account. Yes. Yes, great. Okay. So if you could go ahead and initiate that, okay. I'd appreciate it. I'll, I will start the process on that. Yes, ma'am. Okay. The uh, other thing I wanted to ask you was who was the contractor on the road uh, in Breezy? Uh, Blower and Associates. <coughs> okay. Yeah. My question is, Michael, at what point we continue to see some problems with contractors mm -hmm. um, and we're not seeing a point where we're saying that's enough. At what point are we going to establish some criteria that if we continue to have problems with those contractors that we possibly uh, establish a D-bar list for some period of time? Um, a lot of what I think is happening because this is something that my husband's company is involved in with the state of Oklahoma, is we are seeing certain contractors bidding so low that they're getting so much work that they can't accomplish their work in a timely or professional manner. Mm -hmm. And it's also, we're starting to see this with the different tribes, same companies over and over again. At some point, it seems to me like to establish some criteria that if you have problems on roads, maybe we don't give you more roads for some period of time. Right. Let you catch up when you sell. Um, I, I really think that we need to look into it. I'm always hesitant to say anybody needs to be debarred, and but it's coming to that point mm -hmm. because it's not just. It's not just us. We're seeing it on the state level. We're seeing it with the creeks. We're seeing it with the Osages. We're seeing it with other surrounding tribes. Mm -hmm. And we're seeing it with some cities, some county work. Um, we need to look into whether they can actually handle the amount or flow of business that they have and until they catch up with themselves. Either, either they don't need to be bidding with us again until they caught up and corrected their uh, defects, or maybe we need to establish that debar list, much like the state has. Right, right. I, I mean, I, I have some real concerns because we're seeing some shoddy work, mm -hmm. and and it seems like that's it's because they're trying to do things too quick. Mm -hmm. They're trying to catch up because they've got too many jobs, and there's no uh, 
there's no profit margin in any of these jobs. I mean, I know I help my husband do bidding for the state. And some of the bids that have come in on some of those jobs, they're, they don't even cover their hard dollar costs. Mm -hmm. And so they're going to try to get it. Where they're going to try to make it up is get in there and get out quick. And they don't care whether their work is going to hold up or not. They've got the job done, move on to something else. And they're more likely to do it to us than the state because the state will shut them down. It seems like we're always giving them change orders and uh, more time and uh, looking the other way on some of the things that they do that's inappropriate. We need to bring that to a halt. And that's not, I'm not saying that's what's happening on this the job we're talking about or on any other job, but we need to start looking at it a little closer. Yeah, I, I would agree with you. And, and what's occurring out on Greasy it, it is, is not due to substandard work. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I don't. I don't want to insinuate that issue. And, and I'm not saying that. Right. I'm just saying that it was. Uh, it came up today, and it was something I was going to talk to you okay. about. Okay. Uh, when you made that statement, I thought, well, here we go again. You know, we've got problems on brand new things. Mm -hmm. We do. Yes. I mean, they don't correct. last a week, two mm -hmm. weeks. I mean, the year warranty. My gosh, the whole road would fall in by mm -hmm. then. Mm -hmm. And a lot of it is the base. Mm -hmm. The it base is. that they're putting down. Mm -hmm. They're not taking the time to... Uh, I mean, it's like... Built, I mean, I, I'm not no expert in this deal, but I know if you don't have to start with a good base, everything put on top of it is it's going to be a problem. Very true. And every road that we've ever seen that had a problem, it usually went back to the fact that they tried to create the base too quick. Mm -hmm. But I just ask you to look into it and maybe consider that we've got to maybe so and it's not just your department I've noticed it in other departments that same people are getting all the work then either they can't do it timely or they're not doing it in a manner that is acceptable to us as far as their work mm -hmm. maybe we need to institute something that if you've got this many jobs out there that's still pending you can't bid for a while and let's kind of spread it spread it around and maybe we'll get better work and more timely work. I, I don't know what the answer is. I've just noticed that it's a problem and it seems to be more prevalent with us, well, with tribes, mm -hmm. because we don't have debar policies in place. And they know it. Right. And they take advantage of it. Okay. Be something we're, just, something we're it's just a suggestion and it's no reflection on you all because your hands are tied unless we develop something. Uh, if you know, if a guy's got ten jobs and he's already a year behind, why are we letting him bid on that eleventh project and put us even further behind? Or he's going to do a rush job, mm -hmm. and rush jobs just seem to <coughs> the problems seem to float to the top pretty quick. Yes. No reflection on any company, no reflection on any people in our organization. It just seems like maybe they're trying to take advantage of us. Okay. Everybody pushes that envelope as far as they can. They will. <laughs> I Council appreciate Stark. you. Council Stark, you He's answered my questions. Okay. Is there any more questions for Michael? Michael, I have uh, some of a question, but it's an observation. That I guess I kind of feel like some of the other counselors in here, and I want to talk about transportation just for a second because I see another route that's come on the line. I don't know, I haven't uh, dealt with tra uh, uh, transportation issues as far as uh, your route's going, but I would like to see, and I'm not sure what the criteria that you're using to uh, establish these routes, but I want to talk about uh, Delaware County, especially in the J route, because that's a northern route. And if you take a look at it, you can see all of our routes are going to the south, which council and the council talk about the road. So I'm not particularly talking about that, but I wish we looked at the criteria for doing those routes. One of them would be industry within a particular area. If you look at J in Delaware County, there's nothing up there. Nothing in J, nothing in Kansas, nothing in Oaks, nothing in Caulfield. Grove has very little industry. If you look at all the other transportation routes that are on the books now. There's industrial parks, there's people that had jobs within those particular uh, areas and locations, 
But I think we need to give the people in Delaware County, that's the poorest county, along with Adair County and the Cherokee Nation, a chance for those people to get on a bus that's cheap to ride to go <coughs> to Pryor, go to Tahlequah, go to West Salem, Frank. And I'm not sure that's in your criteria, but I wish if you would take a look at that because we're just putting those people farther and farther back because they've got to drive a 75 to 85 mile round trip to go to their work and back. And those are some of the poorest people that are in the Cherokee Nation. If you look at Muskogee, we have industrial parks in Muskogee, we have industrial parks in Pryor. We have places here that uh, go from uh, Petusa over to Pryor, and those things are heavily populated with industry. Over County, Jade, especially Oaks and Caulfield. If you can show me three factories where that employs public employees, you know, they're not there. So I wish you'd take a look at that and see. Simply because if we don't have places for people to work, they certainly can't get up and drive and make an 85 mile round trip. So anyway, I just want to plant that seed that says let's start taking a look at that because I just feel like we're getting further behind living in a poor county and, and for, we don't have any industry up there. So anyway, if you take a look at that the next time we do a route, I would certainly appreciate it. Too. If, if I could, Mr. Chair, sure. those, those, the routes are initially started with uh, surveys that we did with employees of both Cherokee Nation. Uh, Cherokee Nation uh, Industries and Cherokee Nation Enterprises wasn't necessarily under the CMB umbrella back at the time, but we were just talking last week that we do need to update those surveys and, and resurvey folks. But those were the biggest needs, those biggest areas uh, the, uh, that we saw when we did the initial survey. One of the largest uh, responses that we got back when we did the survey was the responses out of Stillwell area. That's actually probably one of our poorest routes that we're operating right now. That's not surveys are not always a good indicator. Uh, one of the best res best routes that we're operating right now is coming out of Salina and Pryor area into Tahlequah every day. Huge demand there, and uh, practically a, a full bus on on specific days. Uh, again, the survey didn't necessarily tell us that, but we told they did tell us we had we needed riders were wanting transported back and forth to Tahlequah each day. But we do recognize that we need to update that survey. And, uh, well, well, that's good news to hear that. And, and I'd just like to have the opportunity for those people living in Jay and Oaks and Caulfield to get that. We never know because they don't have a place to go to work mm -hmm. and they don't have the money or the gas to travel to the, uh, a destination that's 40 mile and 80 mile round trip. So we never know until we get one in there. But I think we need to think and, and look at people that are in the areas that are isolated, don't have any uh, places to work and stuff like that. So naturally you're going to get those uh, riders if, if they're living in, in Pryor or flying that they have jobs, but if we don't have jobs there in Jay or Callport and Oaks, you know, uh, I just think we need to take a look at that. But that, that's just a suggestion to take a look at that. You would, uh, we will, definitely. Thank you. Michael, you've answered a lot of questions today, and if you would, if you put those uh, Projects out and just send it to the all account members so we'll know what we're for construction. I'll, I'll take care of that. Yes, thank you for your Thank you. Next up is Mr. Sutherland. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning Dave. Oh, uh, start with Ms. Cowan's uh, question she had earlier. I think that's great plan. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the projections that we do uh, on the, at the beginning of the year, are, I believe, are based on just historical the year before. Um, as I kind of indicated to you yesterday, I've had some problems at, at the Claremore office and we've made some personnel changes. And, uh, and, and staff have been uh, looking at that area. I mean, they've had several folks that are concentrating on that. I'll, do, I'll get a status report on what, uh, what we got coming up and uh, what we're working on now and uh, get that to you guys up in that area. Uh, get that just in the next few days. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I got a few disclosures to make for the month. Uh, emergency assistance, handicap accessibility. We've got a gentleman named Douglas Carter. He's brother of housing services employee Dwayne McCarter. Uh, we got uh, Dan, 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 Dan Oberste uh, in a lower end apartment. She's the niece of housing services employee Joanna Davis. Uh, DJ Jones, son of Stephanie Carroll, she's a housing services employee, uh, is getting uh, one of the uh, either rural rental or mutual health homes, repo unit. And then rental assistance for Kelsey Terrapin, she's a relative of the chief, but I don't know what the relationship is. She did have it on her application, so we, we reported it. 
I uh, just wanted to correct one thing on the report. It says the board meeting is on the 21st. It's actually the 24th. Uh, the reason we changed that is uh, I'll be going to Denver, uh, actually be there over the weekend and, and Monday and Tuesday uh, to a board meeting, Ameren board meeting. Uh, one of the things I want to, we're going to discuss while we're there is uh, uh, putting a new um, policy together for the community shield. You know, we've got the $80,000 thing now. It's just not covering some of the houses uh, that we've got size-wise. We need to implement a new Maybe even a couple of different uh, policies uh, in the 110 and 130 thousand dollar range. Uh, so I hope to get uh, hope to get this talk started on that over the weekend. So, but uh, that's generally all I've got to report today. Anyone got any questions? Any questions for Dave? Dave, I have a I guess a comment or just a, something I'd like for you to look into. We talked about it yesterday in the committee about uh, the day work program mm -hmm. and some incidents we've had uh, around some of our housing to uh, see if we couldn't maybe use some of the day workers to actually walk around those houses at night, at least have some, some type of security, carry a flashlight, and let people know that we have people that's walking around with uh, housing units. And I know uh, top tasting training is to do <coughs> what you can't do and what you can't do and stuff like that. But, I just felt like, you know, that would be a good use of the day workers. I mean, that would be a night worker. But, well, that's, but, a, uh, that's the first time I've heard that. That's a, that's but, a very interesting idea. But I know uh, I looked at some of the other tribes up on the uh, reservations when I visited with those, and, and they just had people that actually live in those residential areas just to carry a flashlight and walk around and kind of watch them. If they saw somebody having a big party at uh, 1 o'clock in the morning, they would either knock on the door or call the uh, internal security or call the sheriff or call the police department. So... Take a look at that. I know we'll take a little bit of training and stuff like that. I'll, I'll visit with Diane about that. That's a, that's a really good that, idea. I think that's an excellent idea. But, uh, boy, this summer has been, a, been kind of a wild one. We've had yeah. uh, a couple of uh, incidents yeah. where stabbing, and yeah. unfortunately we had it up at Jay. You probably yeah. heard yeah. about that suicide attempt. And, uh, but just you brought that up. Up here at Tahlequah, I get a call yesterday morning about 8 o'clock. says, uh, there's two ladies fighting outside the uh, office there. There's two tenants. And I had to go by there this morning to pick up a file at the housing authority building. And I'll be long gone if the police wasn't up there about 7.30. They're looking, they're looking hard for somebody right at that same. So I don't know if they got into it again or not. But that's a, well, that's I, a super I just idea. Think, I mean, we've got the day workers out there. And if you could use one or two there, I mean, that's, that's something that's beneficial and that certainly would help our uh, people living in the complexes and us too. So. Anyway, I appreciate if you take a look at it and see if something we've done like that. Any more questions for Dave? Thank you, Dave. Oh, one more. I do have one question. David, would you get with Sharon at the Marshal Service and see if you all, between the two of you, could prepare a report for next month on how often our Marshal Service uh, is out and about in our uh, in some of our sites? From kind of a report on their patrol. Right. I mean, do they patrol every day, twice a day, three times a day? I mean, they... They're operating on almost 50% of your NAHASTA funding. Uh, it would be nice if... Uh, the, only, the only problem I see with what uh, uh, the chair has proposed is what if one of our day workers gets killed out there? I mean, would you walk up to someone's door when they're having a party in the middle of the night and all you have was a flashlight? Well, I'm, I'm, I see that point, but I'm, I don't think that we'd want them doing that. I mean... If they saw something, then they'd report it. I It'd think if we would have more of a presence in our areas of possibly the marshal service, that that might cut down on some of these problems. I know that you've told us in several reports now that you're having problems mm -hmm. in your areas. And I'm just wondering if we could get Sharon's group to step up. And, I've had uh, conversations with her, and any time I've ever asked them to, to do that, they've been real good about it. Uh, what we've got to do, though, David, is we've got to not have to ask. It needs to be automatic. It needs to be something that they're automatically doing. Um, since half of their budget is coming from the HOSTA funding, I believe that dictates to them that they've got to provide some strong presence within your areas. Well, I'll, uh, I'll visit with her and we'll put something together that uh, I can present next week. I would appreciate it. Okay. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Any more questions for David? Thank you, David. Yes.
Next is Commerce, uh, Housing Department, and I'm going to see Shay is here for that. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I should have a copy of the Commerce Report, and I'd be happy to address any questions. <coughs> any questions? Mr. Baker. Uh, I had a fellow that was going through mortgage assistance, uh, low, low income, disabled, uh, can't hardly walk, I mean, uh, and the only way he could get a mortgage was with a co-buyer, and yet we can't let this disabled man have a co-buyer because his sister's not going to live with him, but yet she's willing to go on the mortgage to, uh, to say she'll pay for it if he doesn't. Right. Uh, is there any way that, that we could remedy that? Well, I'll tell you this, in, this, in that particular situation, um, and I'll speak generally because I don't know what his sister's income was. Yeah. Um, in general, though, um, for a co-buyer, that means she would have interest in the property, so she would also have to qualify for the mortgage assistance program. If she qualifies for the mortgage assistance program, she now has interest in the property, which means she'll never be able to qualify for the mortgage assistance program again. She would never be able to get any additional assistance to purchase her own home. She would... Yeah, she probably owns a home. I mean... Which in that case would make her ineligible yeah, for the mortgage yeah. assistance program. But she's just trying to help this disabled brother right. and is willing to, to co-sign, mm -hmm. if you will, and right. she can do that. Um, we don't allow co-signers. Okay. Uh, we allow co-signers for credit purposes, but not for affordability because if push comes to shove, I'm not as concerned about someone else's mortgage as I am my own. Um, with this particular gentleman, there are possibly some other alternatives, and one of them may be the USDA RD loan. Um, it provides a subsidy to um, help make a mortgage payment, so we are going to continue working with this individual, but Bless you. I don't know if that addresses your entire question. But I'm just trying to see how this little fellow can, can make it. Yeah. Know, and we are still working with him, and, and there may be some other options, but yeah, the co-buyer or co-signer would not, would not work for him. Any more questions for Chad? Uh, I just had a comment, mm -hmm. and David, this may be part of your uh, report, too. On the mortgage assistance program, I see our list is getting longer and longer as far as foreclosures go. Is there a trend, Shay, that you're seeing of why these foreclosures are? And I noticed your report it talks about uh, the homeowners training and self-sufficiency that you have a good percentage rate. When they do that, they don't foreclose or don't go into foreclosure. Right. Is that a trend that we're starting to see if they don't have that training? And um, let me say this: they had home buyers education before um, the self-sufficiency counseling program was implemented. It wasn't as intense as what it is now. Um, I don't. I can't speak um, specifically to each case, but in general, most of these families that are being foreclosed on, um, an analysis was not done before providing mortgage assistance to determine whether or not the individual could actually qualify, could actually afford the mortgage. So they could qualify for a mortgage, but as you all know, there's a very big difference between qualifying for a mortgage and actually being able to afford your mortgage payment. Um, so in a lot of these cases, um, the individual never really could afford the mortgage in the first place. Um, as you all know, changes in family status oftentimes have a very detrimental effect on, on an individual's finances, so sometimes a change in family status is um, the cause of some of the foreclosures. Okay, and, and I guess the, the, uh, the flip side, or the bad thing about it, once they get a mortgage assistant through this, it almost disqualifies them for any of the services in the tribe. And that's <coughs> Well, I say that, and I don't know that to be true, but, you know. Right. What if it does disqualify them from um, participating in the mortgage assistance program uh -huh. again, unless, for some reason, they were able to pay back the entire, um, the prorated amount of mortgage assistance that's provided. And, and I take it that, that, that we are looking at these uh, foreclosures to, to see if it's worth us going back and buy a foreclosed home, because we have a lot of money invested in some of these homes. But, uh, but I haven't seen any of them, David, that, that we've actually gone back and bought. And I, I know you've addressed it before that some of them weren't, weren't worth buying either. Yeah, we've, uh, we've bid on some. That is. We haven't been successful. We've had uh, two or three where we really had a, you know, we all had a strong interest. 
when it comes down to get to the sheriff's sale, the, the the family and the lender they worked it out, but okay. there was no sale to go to. So we've okay. seen some of that. Okay. Okay. David. David. Uh, David, I've got a question. I, I don't want to be <clears throat> we have a $15,000 mortgage assistance program. If that was to go up to $25,000, would that in any way lower payments on these homes that these people are, are purchasing? Would that other $10,000 lower have anything to do with lowering payments? It would lower the payments. Um, I can tell you this, though. Um, it's something that's kind of been kicked around a little bit. Number one, it would reduce the number of families we're able to assist through the mortgage assistance program. And as you all have seen um, throughout this year, we have more and more families interested in the mortgage assistance program, really putting forth the effort to get into a situation where they can afford a non-predatory mortgage. Um, so the, answer, the short answer is yes. It would decrease the mortgage payment. Um, what I think may happen, though, is a family would go out and buy a more expensive home because now they've got more money to put down and so 31% of their income could be contributed to housing. And so instead of buying an $85,000 home now, or having an $85,000 mortgage, they'll now have a $95,000 mortgage. And they'll, they'll more than likely buy a home that is about $10,000 more than, the, than what they would have with the $15,000 mortgage system. Mm -hmm. not, not all, but I, I think that's what you'll see. Well, I, know, uh, I know the Choctaws do. They have a $25,000 mortgage assistance program. And uh, I don't, uh, you know, that's the reason I asked the question. I yeah. really don't know. Uh, I don't know if we have any type of influence over them saying how much, by how much they make, is how much they have to, they can spend for a home. I don't know if we have any faith in that nature, but, you know, it's interesting. Just trying to help them out a little bit. Right. Mm -hmm. Dr. George, you had a comment or question? Um, I did notice on this list, and this may be a question for David or, or yourself, that there's about 400000 in this foreclosure report, there's about 400000 in potential losses to the tribe on the mortgage assistance program if these 41 mortgages uh, consummate into a sale mm -hmm. and we're not the buyer. Uh, and it brings less, it can't, uh, can't satisfy that second mortgage. It are, is this the entire mortgage list since we started with the mortgage assistance program or is this just the pending uh, okay. list? This is the, uh, the uh, foreclosures that we've received since October 1st. Oh, this is just one year? Yes. Okay. Would, would it be possible for one of you all to prepare us a list of the entire, uh, since we started the, uh, since we started with the uh, uh, mortgage program, how much we've lost, including Title VI, including mortgage assistance, uh, I don't know if we'd have any other programs out there that I would just like to see what we're talking about in money terms. I mean, if this is since October, and we're in 400000 into this just this fiscal year, what have we lost potentially in prior years, if that's a possibility? I know that uh, since uh, probably the May of 2008, you all would have that. Right. Well, maybe we just go back. It would be easy. would that be easy to obtain, Chuck? Okay, if we could just go back to what was that day? Me and Roy. Uh Let's let's try that sure. for right now. I would just like to to review that if that would be a possibility. And sure. I appreciate all the work that you all are doing. I just noticed I thought this was Liz for several years. I'm I'm sorry. I'm a little bit amazed that that's just since October one. Well, that would be a good report if they could get it for them. If you all could do that for next month, I'd certainly mm -hmm. appreciate it. Thank you all. Councilor Watts, you had a question or a comment? Yes. Um, while we're at it, to put this in perspective, because I think you guys do outstanding work, is do make sure and note, which you do kind of in the report, you split it out pre-counseling, post-counseling, and then you also have a gauge for what the 
uh, foreclosure rate is not just for Oklahoma, but maybe our area, right? Right. It's been a little more difficult to get our hands on than what we thought it would be, but yes. But there's some kind of mm -hmm. external gauge for mainstream population yes. versus our family, which I think is very useful. Mm -hmm. But while we're at it, and you're working with David anyway, could we go ahead and put also the homeownership and mark the timeline of when we made changes to the housing authority and when we adopted mortgage assistance and the number of families we actually serve now, which is far greater under this new model, and kind of mark those periods and timelines so that we kind of have a, a better accurate picture of really what's going on. Sure. Very good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And I just want to make a real fast comment too, Shay. I realize you know, I don't think we want to be too hard on ourselves because if you look at the national average, we are under the national average as far as foreclosure goes. So even though the numbers look maybe the top is the Cherokee Nation, but if you look at it as a whole, we're probably not doing too bad. But anyway, I just want to make that comment, but you had another And, and I think that's probably adding to the comment. If you look on the last page of Shay's report, uh, you've only had 5.9%. Yes. that have went into foreclosure, which is very acceptable in the banking industry, especially given this economy. Right. But I, I want to see it in dollars. Sure. Uh, that's a very acceptable percentage, though, and and that's why I'm I'm really high on your what you all are attempting to do. Uh, if you could get us that report, though, I'd appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thanks. Moving on to old business, uh, I, I want to say this is a good discussion, and we're staying almost within our allotted time. But I think there's been some good points brought up about housing today. So not only housing, but in the road program too. So we had some good discussion. Anyway, moving on to old business, I see none, and the new business, I see none there. So we're going to move on to announcements. I'm sure that uh, Mr. Garvin, you want to plug your meeting again, or take you back to that? Well, those people that were listening last night, you were invited. Five o'clock, supper time, lots of good food. Come on down. <laughs> What's on the menu down there tonight, though, Count Garvey? And in tacos. And in tacos. Oh, yeah. And we might go to oh. cheese and crackers. <laughs> <laughs> Just one quick thing here. Uh, we've got some uh, papers here in front of you it's in your box back there. And I believe, if I'm not wrong on these, and Shelly may know, but I'd ask for some uh, contact people for each school district as far as J-O-M or any grants that the Cherokee Nation may offer. And I think this is what this is. So we might want to take a look at that. And, and one of my districts and one of my counties. Okay, one of my districts and one of the counties. So that's some good information there. But I had some concerns about, you know, are we getting, and they assured me that they were certain to put them out to the school district, but I wanted to ensure that we did have those contact numbers. So that's what they are. And they put a lot of work together to get them. So take a look at them and use them. With nothing further on the agenda, do I hear a motion to adjourn? I'll move. Second. First motion. To adjourn and second. All in favor say aye. 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 A